We are a nation of more than 330 million people, but many of us are plagued by feelings of aloneness, being alone, loneliness in that great crowd. In fact, according to the U.S. Surgeon General, about half of adults in this country are experiencing loneliness in some form, and it's not just a psychological or mental health issue. Loneliness, in fact, can put people at risk for all kinds of problems, including heart disease, diabetes, obesity, a weakened immune system, and sleep problems. In today's edition of Never Too Late, Dr. John LaPook shows us a program in New York that's meant to help. For these high school teenagers, spending the afternoon with people old enough to be their grandparents is their idea of a good time. Every Thursday, a group from the United Nations International School visits this New York City skilled nursing facility okay, I got one. for an afternoon of competition and conversation. It's the brainchild of 17-year-old Max Hockman, who started playing chess with his family at the age of four. I started thinking about it during the COVID-19 pandemic when I heard about how my grandfather was kind of feeling lonely. I decided to just pick up the phone one day and call him and ask him to play chess online with me. I saw how that really like improved his mood. I thought, like, how could I bring this to my community and my seat? That online chess game with his grandfather in Florida has morphed into 60 students visiting three facilities every week. I love all types of them. Much to the delight of residents like Lori James. You know, I'm seeing a lot of talking and very little chess playing. Is that what usually happens with these things? Yeah, yeah sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that's how you connect to one yeah. another. It seems like there's a lot more going on here than just chess. Actually, there's dominoes also and Scrabble, but there's a lot of conversation. Sometimes we don't play any board games at all. We just have a conversation. So it's really about the connection. And we're so pleased to be learning from the residents at these homes. Yeah. Maria Alomar introduced Daria Murnia to the game of dominoes. Uh, you said to me that the people in East Harlem, is that where you're from? Yes. They take dominoes very seriously. Very seriously, yes. What do you mean by that? When they're playing, they're making sure that their domino is shown. They slam it down. Uh -huh. It's the banter back and forth. So there's a little attitude. It, it's a lot of attitude. <laughs> I thought the challenge was to build the most intricate structures so you could knock them down. But I found out that it's a much more complex game than that. I won one game, I won one game, but who's counting? In between chess moves, Luis Sanchez and Hugo Ilmesen discovered they had both lived in Panama. I was showing him some photos of me in Panama and we were talking about it. We speak English and then sometimes we'll speak Spanish. Did it surprise you that students would want to come here and play chess with, with older people? I think that, you know, there's a desire on their end to have the connection as well. So it's not just, you know, the residents wanting to connect with the youth, but the youth wanting to connect with them. Just knowing that there's still genuine young people out there who's willing to, you know, come and sit with us, take the time out mm -hmm. to, you know, to connect with the, you know, generations before them. Gives you faith? Yeah. For CBS Mornings, I'm Dr. John LaPook. I love mm. this story, John LaPook, because both sides get something out of yeah, it. Yeah, right. I love you're it. Right. Interge yeah. Intergenerational connections are huge. Yeah. Very important. If you're young, learning from older people is key. Exactly. Yeah. They've exactly. been through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in this country, we don't tend to value the older people the way I see it's done in other countries. We could all learn something. Maybe about that's that. changing, Gil. Yeah. I hope so. 